Hi, so, um, first of all, let me apologise. And what I'm apologising for is the next bit in which I sound terribly smug. And for that, I am really sorry. But I invented this thing, obviously. It's a graphene ink. And um, the more I work with this, the more amazing I begin to think it is. And that is really smug of me because obviously I invented it. And I'm sorry for that. But um, I was thinking about this and I was thinking about using graphene to take the salt out of seawater and how we could use this graphene ink to do that. And I came up with uh, a method that I think will be actually really quite successful. So the method I'm going to use instead of making a graphene membrane and, and having all the associated technical problems of doing that and looking after it and um, making sure it works properly, which I personally think is years and years away, was to look at a system that I thought could be implemented um, in a very short time scale using graphene to help you actually desalinate seawater. Okay, so when thinking about desalination, what we're actually trying to do is remove the salt ions from the seawater. And there uh, are quite a few ways of doing this. The most um, popular one, the one that's used most, is uh, an osmotic system. And they use different partial pressures. But basically, you have a membrane, you pass your seawater down one way, the pressure will force the water through, but keep the salt on this side. So you get fresh water one side, seawater, concentrated seawater on the other side, and the more salty seawater goes out, and you get a net production of fresh water. Lots of problems with this. It um, uses high energy, it's high energy uh, intensive, uh, the actual structure of the membranes is a bit delicate, so it requires a lot of uh, looking after. Another way of doing it, quite a simple way actually, is solar desalination. So essentially, you have your pot there of seawater, a little pot in there. This is full of your seawater. You have a piece of plastic there, then the sun will heat the water, causing it to evaporate. It'll run down there as it condenses and drip into the center. And you, this gets more and more concentrated and you get fresh water in this section here. And that's a solar evaporator. Um, used an awful lot in sunny climates, obviously. Um, quite energy intensive, although we don't have to put energy in because we're using the sun, still the energy is required. And we can make a system there where we apply the heat directly to boil off the water and collect the fresh water. And again, it's very energy intensive. So that's another method of salin desalination. And there's yet another method of desalination, which is actually my personal favorite. And this is called capacitive desalination. You basically have two plates and you put a charge on each plate, a positive and a negative. You flow your seawater through, then obviously the chlorine is attracted to here and the sodium is attracted to here, and it's held on that surface. And what you get out is fresh water. Now the charge that you put on that surface isn't actually very great. If you had a massive charge on there, you'll get Faraday reactions. All you want to do is hold the ions on there. You don't want to deposit them as sodium or get chlorine off, you don't hold them on the surface. So you only actually put about one and a half volts across that. Tiny voltage, just to hold the ions on there. Problem with that is, it won't hold that many ions. So it's good for brackish water, but not for actual seawater. Now, the reason it won't hold any, that many ions is the surface area is so small. So one way of improving that, obviously, is to increase the surface area. So if we use some kind of um, microporous, nanoporous sponge material, and we have a large surface area from that, so we get our sponge material, get a separated stop electrical contact, our other sponge material, put a 1.5 volt potential across there, pass our seawater through, then positive, negative, we'll get our chlorine left here, our sodium left here, and our fresh water coming out there. And this will be far more efficient because the surface area is just so much bigger. And that gives us the possibility of desalinating seawater using capacitive desalination. Now, one of the good things about this is that once that actually gets clogged up and finished with, you remove the battery. As long as you leave that wet, what's going to happen is these ions are going to migrate back across to join up with each other, and you'll actually get an energy output from that setup. So you're putting energy in to do it initially, but you get energy back out again, so the net energy effect is much, much lower. Now, once that's clogged up, you need to clean it. So cleaning it, you would back flush it with ordinary water. 
The seawater that's gone through has got a uh, lower concentration of salt than the backflow water. So the seawater goes through with a low concentration comes out as, as pure. You put pure, less pure water in to get very concentrated brine out of here to clean that back out again. So a capacitive desalination system has an awful lot of uh, real positive points, real lot of plus points going for it that other systems don't actually have. And the big problem and why the capacitive desalination hasn't really taken off has been to do with this, this large surface area material that will be both conductive, um, have a large surface area, provide a great deal of sites for the chlorine and sodium to sit on without interacting with. And that hasn't been available until now. So here they are. These are um, graphene ink coated sponges. So they've been coated with this graphene ink, allowed to dry, and they're very electroconductive, very flexible, and very porous. Now, if I take my graphene coated sponge, pop a separator between the two sponges, it's just a bit of paper, obviously you can use a, a better separator like a plastic separator, and then attach a battery across the two and pour my salt water through those sponges, it will drip through as pure water, leaving the sodium and the chlorine in place. As I say, you remove the battery and then it will reverse that process and you'll likely get electrical charge back out of it. So there we go, a graphene-based desalination system. And I ate another use for this ink. Now, obviously this is all part of my Indiegogo campaign. So if you would like to fund that and have me research into this further and um, get this going, then please feel free to visit the Indiegogo site. The link is in the bottom and all donations are gratefully received, obviously. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed that.